we were rendering a bit with the preview AO. So let's go ahead and continue that and talk about the new uh, filter that they added. Now, VBR filters is something added in ZBrush 2019. So you can see uh, ZBrush 2019, what's new. If you want to know all about those, really deep dive in on those. Check out all those videos again on my ArtStation page for what's new in 2019, plus my YouTube channel playlist videos, ZBrush 2019, what's new. Now, we used this in the Skull demo earlier. Uh, so really just pick an object. And if you, you need an object to play around, let's hit the comma key, go into tool, grab any one of these. But if you've made something in ZBrush before, uh, let's go ahead and give it a little bit of a museum quality lighting pass. Uh, in fact, you know, let's go ahead and grab this uh, this one right here. Let's hold on shift and turn everything else back on. So here we have this mechanical skull. If you want to know how to make this, again, on my station page, there's a mechanical skull, YouTube channel, mechanical skull. Go check that out. So we have a mechanical skull in here. So let's put a little pedestal on it or something so we can, again, make it look like it's in a museum. So just really quickly, I'm going to append uh, any since you already have meshes in here, even appending a primitive is going to turn it into a polymesh 3D. If you want to play it safe, just grab that star, polymesh 3D, select that star. If I hit transparent, you can see there's my star right in the middle here. I'm going to go down here to initialize, hit Q cube, but the resolution of two is fine. I'm going to hit E. Let's go ahead and turn off perspective temporarily. I'm going to hit E to go into, well, I mean, you can hit W and use the gizmo. It doesn't really matter with the gizmo. Go ahead and scale this up and down. And if you're again, if you're new to ZBrush, you don't know anything I'm talking about. Number one, maybe you don't start with this playlist. Number two, go over here to the ZBrush for Ideation series, 57 videos to get you caught up. Same thing on my YouTube channel. So we're gonna put this cube underneath my head here. We can use the gizmo to kind of go and move scale and rotate this out. So now we have this kind of platform for our mesh. Now, this is a very harsh edge platform. So let's go ahead and change that a little bit. Let's go in here to Geometry, Dynamic Subdivision, turn on Dynamic. Let's crank up Q Grid, and also crank up that coverage so we can kind of give our, ourselves a little bit of a nice edge fall off here so that light can catch that edge. And again, just change that coverage to make that a little looser, a little tighter, however you uh, want that to look. All right, and the other thing I want to do is I want to turn on the floor because that's actually going to be a shadow catcher for when I go to render this. We'll turn off Transparent as well. So now we have our object sitting on a little museum piece, I can take this museum, and you're gonna see as I move this down, the floor is gonna move down uh, with it. So if I move this up and then change my camera, that floor is gonna to snap to the bottom of your lowest subtool. That's a feature of ZBrush. If you don't like that, go in here to draw, change that elevation to zero. But it's kind of nice for us because it's gonna catch that shadow right on that plane. So let's turn perspective back on. Let's hit BPR render. And that's essentially a best preview render. So what I can do is I can go in here, for example, and we'll take this light and we'll just move that light menu over here. Just grab that white dot and just drag it over into the stocking side over here. And if you go through here and you change the position of this light, so let's like put it in the front right here, and then again hit BPR, you're going to see now it's casting a shadow along the back so we can see it. Now, we want this to look like a museum with a spotlight above it. So I'm going to take that light and put it right up here at the top. And now when I hit BPR render, that shadow is going to go straight down. Now there's some other render passes we can do. We can go in here to the render menu, drag that over here. Uh, underneath the render pass, you're gonna see uh, there's any occlusion and SSS we don't have turned on. If you wanna turn those on, underneath render properties, just go over here to AO, ambient occlusion. In the video previous to this, we talked about the preview AO. This is gonna be a BPR render AO. So we can go in here to the AO shadows, uh, shadow settings, AO settings. Let's take this global strength, and uh, you know we'll put it down to 0.5 for both these. Crank that angle up on that shadow, because you see how that shadow is very harsh here. If you move that angle up a little bit on that VPR shadow and then re-render it, you're gonna see it kind of softens out a little bit. Now, it got a little bit muddy. If we hover over this AO, you're gonna see that AO introduced a lot of gray in our scene. Let's take that blur and move that down to zero. And let's crank that resolution and raise up uh, a little bit. And now if we re-render this, it's gonna take a little bit longer, uh, but your AO is gonna be a lot cleaner. So we get a nice clean uh, render. It's got shadows now. And you know what? Let's I changed my mind. Let's take that shadow maybe to like 0.75. Just wanted to get a little bit more. There we go. So now, how do we get that museum look? Well, once you hit BPR render, if you go down to the very bottom of your render menu, you're going to see there's an area for BPR filters. So if I open that up, you're going to see I have a bunch of options in here. And again, if you want to deep dive in this. ZBrush 2019, what's new? 
ZBrush 2019, what's new? There's all so many things on VPR filters. Look at the, the cool effects you can get uh, very, very quickly. But we're just going to talk about one today. And that is, if I go in here to F1 and I turn this on, the default is noise. So if you like noise and you want to add noise to your scene, boom, there you go. And if you want to, say, blend mode, and you want to multiply that noise into your scene, there you go. That's how you do it. What we're going to do, we'll go ahead and keep that on normal. Uh, let's take that filter, and in the very bottom right-hand corner is a radial overlay. So it's kind of like a vignette that behaves a little bit more like a spotlight. So if we go in here to our modifiers here, we can say the up-down position, so we can raise up or down that light in our scene, and then also the radius of the light. So if we crank this down, we're going to get a uh, more of a narrow spotlight effect. And then that fall off too, we can go through here and we can decrease the fall off so it's not as soft. So you can see we're getting, instead of just a vignette that kind of blur, you know, makes the edges black, we're giving it more of a spotlight look. Now, if you need to move the spotlight, you know, left or right a little bit or away or towards you, that's up to you. But generally, the default uh, numbers are pretty good. And of course, we have apply to floor on because, you know, again, we want to catch that uh, light on the floor. Now, the radial overlay amount is basically switching between the back and the front color. The back color is black by default, so at negative 100, it turns black. At positive 100, it's going to be positive 100. It's going to be white. And this is all done in post, so that's why we're able to make these changes on the fly and it updates immediately because it doesn't have to re-render. You only render once, and then all of these filters happen after the render. So these, you can turn these on and off very quickly. You can go through here and you can add some more, so if you want to blur this out or... If you want to maybe do like a contrast user color and then go in here to the front color and if you dial in, you know, a darker color or a lighter color, you can kind of change the contrast on the fly. You can go in here to another one, turn this one on. You can add sharpen, so the sharpen filter. If you want to see the effect, just turn that on and off. There you go. Get a little bit of sharpen on there. All sorts of cool filters you can apply uh, to your image. And then if you want to change the, the view and go in there and here and say, you know what, I want to render it from, you know, maybe a little bit closer and then hit BPR again, it's going to BPR render all your render passes and apply these filters, which again, you can go in here and change on the fly.